quite a quite a presenter. We're, we're gonna have to to that. Yeah, he's animated. Uh, I've known Scott. He's been a uh, uh, to call him a core developer on LTSP. He still doesn't doesn't say enough. He's uh, he's been my, my right hand man on LTSP to the point where he pretty much did all the work and I watch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've known Scott for gosh 12, 13 years now, and uh, he's one of my best friends. Uh, he is working on a project on, on, on Aludra. I'm going to just start it. Just, yeah. It's a very new project, mm -hmm. but uh, it's it's got some real potential. Uh, and you'll also get a chance to learn a little bit about the Fuse file system and how yeah. to how to uh, how to use what's there and how to how to make new stuff if you want to write file systems. So uh, so without, uh, without taking up any more time, I'm going to turn this over to Scott. So Fair enough, Scott. Thanks, Jim. Um, yeah, my name is uh, oh, Hold on, of course. Password to go okay. Bell Neve. Bell Neve. Um, I'm the uh, uh, <coughs> ostensibly the manager of IT for, for Legal Aid Manitoba. Um, just so I can give a, a, a bit of a background as to where this is uh, where this is all going. Um, in the uh, Legal Aid Manitoba is kind of the equivalent of your uh, public defenders uh, programs that you have uh, down here in the states. Uh, we're an arm's length uh, government uh, government organization that, uh, in fact, acts against the government uh, by uh, defending uh, low-income Manitobans from uh, from uh, uh, criminal charges and, of course, also helping with uh, um, helping with domestic type uh, things, child custody, divorces, etc. Um, we just recently uh, gone through a large move. Of uh, all of our offices, we expanded our the number of offices for for various reasons, and uh, now we're uh, of course a couple of about three months ago this, this uh, document imaging project that we uh, we've been working on had been put on hold, and of course literally pretty much at the end of the move, you know everybody needs to take a deep breath. And senior management has me in a meeting and goes, "Oh, this document imaging, right? That's been delayed for about a year. So what are you going to do this? You know." Sort of a thing, and yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> so we started looking around, uh, and uh, Legal Aid has some uh, interesting document management requirements that probably a lot of places do not have. Um, we looked around at, at some packages, and, and it's still not entirely uh, for certain that we won't go with some commercial package, but a lot of commercial document management packages don't handle the automatic deletion of documents. They're geared towards keeping everything forever. And of course, there are some documents that we want to keep forever. There's others that we want to disappear in a very, very timely manner. In the legal field, uh, you have to deal with what are called chain of custody uh, issues. <coughs> When you're presented with evidence uh, for a case, normally you either have to, if you're a lawyer, you have to certify that the evidence isn't going to be copied at all, or alternatively, you have to somehow uh, provide some sort of a guarantee that if the, you're going to take a copy of the evidence, that the evidence will disappear uh, when, the, when the trial is over. Um, uh, evidence can range from everything from just you know standard uh, court documents, some of which are public uh, and are available if you if you go down to the courthouse. Or alternatively, uh, some of them could be pictures, videos, autopsy reports, etc. Um, so these are the kind of thing that you want to disappear without any uh, work on the part of the user, because of course for those of you who are systems administrators and in large organizations. People are very, very good about creating documents, not quite so good about cleaning up up after themselves, right? Everything tends to stay around forever. You really don't want autopsy photos or anything like that hanging around on your on your server by by law. They're they're uh, they're not supposed to hang around. One of the things that we very specifically have to deal with um, of course, the big thing nowadays is the cloud, and everybody wants to know about the cloud, what we're going to do about the cloud. At Legal Aid, we can't deal with the cloud, or if we set up a cloud, it has to be our own private cloud. 
because in chain of custody, you can be pulled in front of a judge and the judge will ask you, you know, where has this evidence been? Who has been in possession of this evidence? And you can't stand up in front of a judge and go, it's on the cloud, <laughs> right? Um, so that sort of uh, will end you up in jail on a contempt of court charge. <laughs> Uh, so we have to be in control uh, of all of our documents at all times and we have to make sure that they're disappearing, the ones that we need to disappear are disappearing in a, in a timely manner. We also, like uh, a lot of uh, government organizations, have uh, an aging workforce and um, there's uh, of course a lot of resistance to change. Uh, I don't Anything, anything, any change in the way people are used to doing their work uh, is, is going to be uh, met with supreme resistance. I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later by some anecdotes, but um, we are a Linux shop. We've been a Linux shop since, uh, oh goodness, uh, we started off with uh, LTSP, I think we implemented we started testing LTSP back in 1999, and we implemented our first LTSP network as a production environment in, uh, it was um, St. Patrick's Day, two, 2000. Mm. And by 2001, all of our desktops uh, were thin client Linux, and they are all thin client Linux uh, to this day. And that's like uh, uh, approximately 200 now, isn't it? Yeah, we're getting up uh, close to not only uh, uh, we're getting up about 190 some odd desktops, and that's spread throughout uh, a, a geographic area that's roughly at least the size of uh, North Dakota and South Dakota, and a goodly chunk of uh, Minnesota uh, thrown into boot. Um, our farthest away office that we have is about five to six hundred miles away from uh, from where I am. And uh, so I have to support a, a fairly widely separated area. And of course, they're all used to uh, what do legal assistants do? They sit in open office all day and they create documents for court. Right? They want to do file open of their precedents. What, uh, we call them precedents templates, essentially. They want to do a file open on their template, plug in some names, file save. That's what they want to do. Boom, 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 boom. And they crank up lots of those. So lots of the document uh, management uh, uh, things that we've uh, seen out on the market usually either have a custom uh, interface or they have a web interface where you're going to save it locally and then you're going to check it into the document management. And uh, we sort of determined that that might not be uh, what we're looking for. So, of course, Scott being the kind of person who's really interested in open source says, oh, I bet we could solve this with Fuse. Uh, so now we'll talk a little bit about Fuse. How many people here have heard of Fuse or have used Fuse? Okay. How many people have programmed in Fuse? <laughs> okay. Fuse is literally the most awesome thing that you will ever have anything to do with. It is, it is really, really uh, quite an amazing technology. Uh, we used it uh, to quite uh, some good use in the LTSP project. I've personally written about five or six different Fuse file systems to, uh, to solve problems. Fuse is file systems in user space. Basically what it is, is it started out with a, a project that was a, uh, an add-on uh, kernel module that eventually got uh, adopted and integrated into the into the upstream kernel. And essentially what it is, is it's a layer on the, uh, the VFS uh, layer on the kernel. And basically what they do is they're doing a little bit of munging up top to simplify the file system uh, semantics. But the standard Unix file system semantics are exported as functions that you can implement. And basically so long as you implement these, these uh, functions, you can make whatever it is that you want appear as a file system. Right? So the, the sort of the standard just listing a few of them, right? There's there's get at her to be able to look at the group and user IDs and permissions and all of that uh, uh, geometry uh, surrounding a file. 
there's the lister, which is going to allow you to populate the, the names of a directory. Open. Uh, we'll talk about close a little bit. There really isn't a close. Uh, you think there's a close, but it's actually two separate things underneath the, uh, the covers. Read, write, you know, move, rename, etc. If you implement these, these functions yourself, you can write a, a fused file system, and you can write one in a surprisingly small amount of, of space. Um, to write a good one takes a little bit longer, because what will end up happening is your file system will be inefficient. But to just get something going so that it works and is functional, less than a 1,000 lines of, of, of code. Very, very small. So how do you go about being a fused file system wizard? Well, there's bindings for everything, just about every language that you can come up with. Uh, somebody's written uh, fuse bindings for. Python, Perl, C and C++ are sort of the, uh, the, uh, the big four. Uh, Ruby uh, has got a, a quite a, a well-used uh, uh, binding. There's Haskell. I don't even know what Haskell is. Mm -hmm. And even Common Lisp, just in case you've got any old Lisp hackers out there uh, still, uh, still wandering around. So any language that you can come up with or that you're likely to come up with, from compiled languages to interpreted languages, there's a binding for it. Second thing that you want to do is you want to pick an application that you think you could represent in a file system uh, like manner. Uh, one of the file systems I've written uh, is uh, there used to be a, a board, an experimenter board, called the uh, K8055. And uh, it was uh, basically a, a USB board. Uh, it had a, uh, a USB port on it, and then it had a bunch of inputs and outputs, right? That you could hook up to switches, relays, you know, just about anything. It was a standard. It had two analog inputs, two analog outputs, and I think it was eight or sixteen uh, programmable inputs and outputs. Um, I wrote a, uh, a quick file system uh, for this and put it out on the internet. And I was quite surprised. It sat out there on the internet and didn't do anything for, for quite some time. And then it got picked up by some school down in Florida. And they had bought a bunch of these boards and were, were going to use it to use this file system as a way for them to, to do some sort of a class project that they were doing. So you know, basically, I represented all the input and output pins and the analog and digital inputs and outputs as files that you could simply write to and read from. And, uh, and it, it worked uh, really well, and I was pleased to see somebody use it. Um, I've written, uh, and there are other implementations of uh, uh, allowing your LDAP directory uh, to look like a file system. You know, you CD around into your OUs, <laughs> and you can, you know, VI your CNs and, and uh, you know, make the changes to the file and save it back out. And that works out, uh, really. To, to create an o OU, you do a make dir. Right. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's a lot of fun that you can have. It's it's really quite interesting. Um, so if you if you've got an application that you want to file systemize, uh, then uh, you can uh, you can do it. And then after that, you just have to basically figure out the relevant file system calls that you're going to uh, that you're going to implement the get address, the opens. You really only need two in order to be able to implement something that you can CD into and CD around and do an LS minus L and actually see things. And that's basically get adder and read her. Once you've implemented those two, uh, you can move around within the file system. And typically how I do things when, when I'm writing a, a, a fuse file system, those are the two that I do first. right? And then you just start adding functionality. OK, now I want to rename files. So write that call. You know, Now I want to delete a file. OK, now write the, the unlinked call, et cetera, et cetera. So over time. And I think when I was uh, doing some playing around with the early, early days of the Eludra file system a month and a half ago, <laughs> I was uh, texting uh, or instant messaging Jim. You know, oh, now the file system does this. You know, so it's really, uh, it's really kind of neat. So it's a lot of fun uh, playing around. Um, if you're at all interested in, in programming, and you're sort of a low-level system guy like me, uh, playing around with Fuse is just, just a ton of fun. Uh, and uh, it gets really, you can you can write something very, very quickly, get something going, and you're just sitting there CDing around your file system. Wow, this is pretty cool. So, uh, so what are some of the uh, advantages of, or some of the things that are, that are implemented with Fuse? Uh, one of the big ones, how many people here have heard of SSHFS? 
Okay, so we got a few people who haven't. So I'll, I'll talk about that one. SSHFS is uh, again one of the, the handier. Um, Uh, one of the handier things that, that you can uh, uh, that you can get going, um, if you've got a uh, machine that you can SSH <coughs> into, you can mount file you can mount all your files from it. Uh, it's really cool. So we can. Uh, this is just a package. It's uh, available in. Uh, I know it's available in Debian, uh, Ubuntu. Pretty sure it's available. I heard somebody was running CentOS. Can somebody uh, verify if the, the Red Hat uh, variants have SSHFS? I think it might be an Apple for the Sentinel uh, flavors. Yeah. Okay. Well, at any rate, on, on Ubuntu, Debian, and, and variants, it's the package name is just basically SSHFS. Go ahead and install it, and from there. Uh, now I've got a machine set up here that basically uses uh, a public key, uh, but um, uh, it will ask for a password uh, from you if you need it. So you can just do SSHFS. And I believe, uh, what is it? I never remember. Whether it's, I think it's, yeah, poster. 